Amen. The passage of scripture today in 1 Peter is one that it says a whole lot in these few verses, but even in the chapter, it's setting up a situation where mankind can believe. For the Apostle Peter calls us to rejoice because we believe in a risen Christ. My, my. When we say we believe in a risen Christ, we are also saying, and it's implied, that we believe in a God that took a part of himself to come down to wash your mess away. My, my, my. Come on. A God that took his only begotten son, as we said, but for those who are Trinitarian, believe that he took the word part of him and allowed it to come and be truly human yes. so that he would give us a living example as well a wash. My, my, my. Come on. So I don't, I don't know about most of you, but I know that I have a history and all of it has not been in the church. Mm. Mm -hmm. I have a history and I know that I've sinned and come short of God. Yes, before. yes. And it blows my mind the number of people in the church act like they never had any Come on, fun. come on, yes. come on. Or yes. Come on. But when we think about the goodness of ah. God, and the fact that he took his word and allowed it to become flesh yes. and called it Jesus so he would be the Christ, the Messiah, the Redeemer for all of us. I don't know about you, but that gives me hope. My, my, my. That lets me know that regardless of what I was, touch somebody and say, I don't care what you were. I don't care what you were. Do you believe? Do you believe? Come on. Come on, Pastor. Uh, Come on. See, some of y'all just yeah, had a flashback. Yeah, yeah. Some of y'all just got to reflect yeah. back on. on yes, sir. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe my was was just last night, mm -hmm. but can I be changed right now? Maybe my was was 10 years ago. Maybe my was was so long ago, I want to try to pretend like it never happened. Well, but we all had a past. Yeah. Ah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, time. Come on. <laughs> but thank God for grace. Can thank I, can God. I say thank God for grace? Yeah, amen. See, because I have to mess with the scripture a little. Look, see, because in the sixth verse it says, In this you rejoice even if now a little while you had to suffer. Mm. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all done cry. Yes. Some of y'all done cry to the point that you had to swap pillows at night. Mm. Well. Some of y'all done cried to the point that you had to pull over on the side of the road because you had too many juices. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Some of y'all done cried to the point that your blood pressure ran up and you were sick because you realized that you were just in a situation and you don't know what mm. to do. Mm -hmm. But it's okay that we have to suffer because Christ suffered for us. Amen. And some of us have to suffer for one or two reasons. One of, one of them is we have to suffer because we don't hear too well. My, my, my. Come on. Come on. We are hard-headed, stubborn, rebellious. And we just don't want to hear from God. And then some of us suffer because we're walking the straight and narrow. But 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 some people watching us mm. have to see us go through some things and yes. see us stand on the wall. Yes, see sir. us go through some things and see that we're still faithful. Somebody had to see you go through your lowest point and you still believed in a God that was able. Then that was enough for them to say, I must do something. I must do something. Come on. Ah, see, when you look at you look at what Jesus told us, and, I, and I'm trying to set this text up because what He told us, and, and, and when He came back, that we need to be a discipling yes believer. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to go out here and bring people into the fold. Yes. And the best way to bring people into the fold is not with your mouth. Mm -hmm. the way you live. Come on, come on. Come but on. if your walk is uh, true, uh, and if your walk is true in season and out of season, yes. somebody will begin somebody. To, to believe and have a little hope that that same God that brought you out yes. can bring them out. Bring them out. Come on. Yeah. Just the other day, I was talking to a friend of mine, and as we talk about a, a living hope, and this friend of mine, he called and he said, you know, Reb, I'm glad I talked to you the other week. He said, because you know, I messed up. You know, I've been clean seven years and I messed up. And he said, and, and, I, and I lied to you, though. I told you that my girlfriend had made me mess up. My, my. my uh -huh. Well. I said, well, uh, 
I didn't believe that when you said it. <laughs> All right. All he right. said, but you didn't say anything. I said, well, sometimes it's good to let people just hear themselves out loud. He said, but I just want to call back and let you know that, that you know, it's been three weeks now and I haven't messed up. Mm -hmm. I said, that's a long way from seven years. He said, but it's three weeks. I said, so let's see if we can get four weeks. All see, right. every now and again, we've got to encourage, encourage people. Not, encourage. not to look at the big picture, but you've got to encourage people to take a step. Yes. And when we start talking about a living hope, see, some of y'all say, well, I don't do drugs, but some of y'all are addicted to something. Come on, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. See, it. see. It. <laughs> some of y'all are addicted to a lifestyle that causes you to be in trouble. Yes. yes. Some of y'all are addicted to a lifestyle that causes you to go and throw your rock and hide your hand, and I don't know which is worse, being an addict or being a fool. My, 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 my. Come on. Come on. That's all right. See, see, the power with which Peter aims to equip these beleaguered saints is the power of hope. You know, have you ever seen a person that's hopeless? My, 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 my. You know, I was in, in Charlotte for 11 years in a, in a place, and homeless people, they had more hope than some people in church. My, 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 my. They knew what they had. They knew what they had to go through. They knew their circumstances, but they knew that every day God every was going to supply for them. Yes. Oh, oh, watch this, watch this. They would even get around together, and they would pinch their pennies. I, I know y'all going to say, wait a minute, what you talking about? They would pinch their pins, yes. and then they would go to the neighborhood store and get their will out run. Yes, <laughs> they would get their will out run. That's right. Oh, y'all don't know what that is. Oh, come on. 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 And I said, I thought y'all used to drink Mad Dog. He said, well, we've grown up. That stuff will mess your head up. <laughs> come on. But then if you watch them, they would sit over there together and they yes. would take their little bit and they would just make sure everybody got some. Yes. And then they would come back over there and then they would, one would have a can or something, they'd take his knife and then put it over there and they heat it up. <laughs> then the other one would have a bag or something and then and next thing you know, they're sitting over there having a feast together. But we have some people in nice homes. Come on. Talk to each other. Come on. Come nice on. Homes. Don't even pray together. Yeah. People are living good and lo and behold, they don't care about anybody but what but, they have. I'm just trying to say, have the church lost its power. Amen. 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 Ah. That's right. Mm. If they or we are going to live and love like Jesus commanded us, even in times of great stress and worry, then we need to be living in hope. Because without hope, all you want to do, have you ever seen a person so depressed, every time you go in the house, everything is dark. My, my. Yes. Every time they open their mouth, everything, everything is dark. And matter of fact, you get to the point that even when you're around them, they begin to pull you down. So you say, I got to go. Well. And then you say, well, you sound like you're depressed. I ain't depressed. Well, you sound like you're going through so I ain't going through nothing. My, my, my. I said, well, you pop your neck one more time. It might fall off your shoulder. Well, 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 well. Come See, on. Y'all don't talk to people like that. Come we want to pretend like everything is good. But I'm just trying to tell you, when you see people going through like that, sometimes you just need to grab their hand and say, I'm just going to pray for you whether you want it or not. Yes, and yes. Then, when they try yes. to pull their hand back, you just clench on a little bit tighter. Little tight. You say, because I know a man that's able. Well, I don't get you to just come to I don't get you to come to Bible study. You know, maybe I need to bring Bible study yes. right here with you because you need to get yourself yes, together. Yes, yes, yes. Come on. Peter's letter has been called the gospel of hope. Mm -hmm. A great characteristic, or maybe I should say a great statement creating a Christian life that regardless of where you are, were, or whatever you're going through right now, it's going to get better. It'll get better. It'll get better. Now, when we start talking about a Christian hope, see, hope sustains us in the midst of difficulties. Yes. Mm -hmm. For hope is born out of confidence and belief that things are going to change. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of us, we have been told all of our life you would never amount never to anything. Amount to anything. Mm -hmm. You've been told all of your life that you are just, you just, Amen. just like your daddy. No. Come on, come on, come on. Like say, it, say it, say it, say it. You're like great uncle so-and-so. Uh-huh. You're going to be just like that aunt that was... Uh-huh, uh come on. And then you begin to plant all this stuff inside of these kids. Yes. And you wonder why they're walking around acting up. 
acting. Maybe they're not acting up. They're acting the way you told them to be. Yeah, you planted it in. Instead of telling them that you are a jewel, you you are you are a queen, you are a king, you have royalty in you. Yes. You've been washed in the blood of the yes. Lamb. Yes. Yes. But we can't tell them that preach, if preach. we don't know it for ourselves. Preach. Preach. Yes. preach. Yes. Yet resurrection hope does not diminish the, the debilitating power and, and, and the distressing trial. See, I want you to know you're going to go through some things even though there's been a resurrection. But you know what? When you've got God on the inside of you and he's shining on the outside well, of you, even when you're at your lowest point, you still can just smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my, 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 my. And they wonder why your head bobbing because you're saying there's something we've been made and do for night. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> But I know my light's coming on in the morning, oh, and my morning might be the next turn. Oh, but see, that's the kind of hope that you have to have when you're walking yes, in the will yes, of God. Yes. See, we, we, we thus can not only endure, but we can live victoriously as we experience a life of joy in Christ, knowing that Christ has the final answer. Mama. Christ has the final power. And that divine Christ is able to keep you. See, the living Christ is a source of a new birth. And some of us say, well, I'm not sure I've been born again. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. And I can't answer that for you. My, 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 my. But I can tell you this. The Bible teaches me that if I confess with my with mind, my mind. <laughs> and truly believe in my heart, yes, I'm saved. Yes. Jesus said, if you love it, Ah. You would keep his command. Yes. And all I'm trying to say is, but he also told us that when you believe in him, mm -hmm. that's enough. Amen. I have a nephew, and he told me a few years ago, he said, he said, Uncle Charlie, I'm not sure I'm saved. Mm. Go to church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I said, why? He said, I get so mad sometimes. Mm. I said, well, Dogs go mad. People get upset. He said, no, um, I get mad. Mm. He said, I get so mad sometimes I can't see things go out of focus. Mm. And I said, well, you need to, every time you get like that, you need to get the Bible and just read it until you can see it. Amen. He said, how can I read it if I can't see it? Mm. I said, well, if you focus on the Bible hard enough and quit focusing on what you're mad at, maybe you can see it. Well, the other day when I was over with my sisters, he came over there and he gave me a big hug from the behind side, like, boom! Mm -hmm. What's up? He said, you know, when I get mad now, I do what you told me. Mm -hmm. I said, well, wait a minute now. You've been in church long enough now. You don't need to be getting mad. You need to be getting on your knees. He said, so now you're telling me I need to open the Bible and then get on my knees and pray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get instructions. I say, yes, sir. He about 6'3". Now, you know, I had to look up at my head. And he got more gut than me, so I had to say, okay. <laughs> and then he said, okay, I'm going to do that. Mm. And, and, and I love it because he's so genuine. And, you know, we said he was special, and he may be more special than most of us because one thing about him, he's been through a whole lot in life. Uh-huh. <clears throat> But he never lost his foundation. Never lost. Amen. Hallelujah. See, God's glory is best for you lies ahead. Mm -hmm. Anticipating what God has in store for you can release joy in your soul and put a smile on your face. Hope gives us confidence and let us live with inner strength. By me telling my nephew these things. See, he has enough hope and faith to believe that if I do this, God will take care He'll of me. He'll take care of me. And he believed that with all of his faith. See, sometimes we're too educated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're too sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're too smart. Tell it, to tell it, tell it, tell it. Tell it. Amen. So today I want to talk about three things. I want to talk about a living hope, a future hope, and a present hope. And I want you to think about these things because when we begin to move through life, sometimes we forget that we need to have hope. And sometimes we, we're always talking about a living hope. And a living hope is something you go through every day. And some of us are living, but we are living hopeless. My, my. My, 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 my. We're living like this because we don't understand. See, when Peter penned these words about, about 30 years after Christ's death and the resurrection, he was writing to encourage the persecuted Christian of Asia Minor. 
Mm -hmm. Peter addressed those who were feeling discouraged, displaced, and depressed. Do that sound like today? Well. Okay, I, I'm going to mess with somebody. All I mean, right. Y'all put Obama in the office. I did too. <laughs> and y'all, and I do too, feel like when you had to go through all these things, now it's not getting any better. Amen, life. Amen. <laughs> but see, but God said put your trust in him. No man. That's right. That's right. Now, the reason I'm telling you this, so when I went to his first inauguration, I was sitting there, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I was just like, this ain't right. Mm -hmm. People, all races, nations, and it was all in perfect harmony. I was in this church, and we was feeding people, and it was ice cold. And everybody was just loving on each other and happy my, in Washington, D.C. Mm. I say something wrong here. <laughs> you know, and I was just looking around, and it was like one of those aha moments where you realize, wait a minute. It's such harmony here. It's either God's getting ready to do something amazing or the devil's getting ready to launch all of his weapons on this country. Well, y'all missed that part. <laughs> then the second inauguration, when they went in and they was talking to him, and, and I saw on TV, and he walked back out and he wanted to look at it. He said, because this will be the last time. Mm -hmm. But you know, people have still lost to get in his own party and the other party is doing everything to stop anything that he's trying to do. People have changed their platform just so they can stop what he's trying to do. Yes. But how many of you are trying to make a difference for yourself? Well, 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 well. See, I'm saying these things because you thought this president was going to be your Messiah. Uh -huh. You thought this president was going to be the one that was going to deliver you. Yes. And everybody was going to have two cars and a garage and live in fat and happy. But I want you to understand uh -huh. that we need to put all of our trust, our trust in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. So when I talk about a living hope, and I want you to think about a living hope, I want you to know that there's only power in the resurrected Christ. Yes. So first, a living hope. Peter begins the main body of this letter in, in verse 3 with praise for the wonder of salvation. Is anybody in here today not saved? All right. I knew nobody would raise their hand on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people don't want to admit that they're not saved. <laughs> Right. Mm. God knows. And the reason I ask you this way, and I'm trying to make light of it, is because sometimes you, you sit over there and people start talking scripture to you and you get angry. Yes. Sometimes people start saying things to you and it's convicting you and you allow you allow God's message become God God's message become your enemy. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to hear that. You want to continue to live in the flesh. Well, man. Well, well, well. But blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again and to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God has caused us to want to be born again. Yes. He told Nicodemus, mm -hmm. you must, must be born again. Must. You know, Nicodemus did like some of y'all. Well, I'm too old for that. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't go back in my mama's womb. <laughs> what you mean I got to be born again? Somebody said, well, you got to change. What you mean I got to change? I'm, I'm me. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So nobody tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when all of a sudden the devil take his hands off of you and you start getting beat like a set of drums and you don't know what to turn and all you just feel like everything you touch turn dark. Everything you touch break up. Everything you touch is just a mess. And then you finally say, hey, uh, preacher, mm -hmm. what must I do? Fix it. Y'all don't never pray for me. Mama. <laughs> Well, you told me you, you didn't want prayer because you told me you didn't want to believe. You told me to get out of your face. Uh -huh. My Bible told me when people reject it, to go there and take my shoes and dust them off and then take my blessings with me. Take them with you. See, people don't want to hear this in the church. Right. And see, when That's you right. take your blessings off of people, they are hopeless. They yes. are unhappy. They are miserable. And every time they turn around, they seem like it's always a problem. My, Have you my, ever been around somebody like that? Mm. Next time you see them like that, you say, when are you going to come back home? Mm. 
I'm gonna fix him a minute. I'll go, go ahead. Help yourself. Trying to warm up because go ahead. see, sometimes we need to invite people to come back home because we realize that they've been in hell long enough. Yes. That's good work. Yes. 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 Mm. Mm. Hope through a resurrection. Now, I, I, I got to work on this one a little bit because I want y'all to think about When I say hope through a resurrection, everybody thinks they have to die mm -hmm. and wait for God to come back and, and blow the horn with Gabriel. Uh -huh. But I want you to understand some of y'all have already died. Yes. And you have a chance to be resurrected in God's glory right here on the flesh so you can be a different person. See, somebody has, has seen you with all of your... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they've been watching all of your Yes And then all of a sudden Your life flipped the script And then you, you, you change they, they get confused because they say Wait a minute now, can I, can I call some names up Laverne, I know how you used to be Alright, alright all right. Well, What do you mean you're going to invite me to church mm -hmm. I remember we used to sit over there And then, you know, do that stuff together My, my, my right. mm -hmm. Vicky. Mm -hmm. What you mean? You want me to come and go to church with you? I didn't know you come to church, girl. Mm -hmm. I remember when we were in grade school, you know, we mm -hmm. had that thing going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring it up. And, then, on. and then you can look at them and say, yeah, but I'm glad God had enough of grace to yes. watch me in the midst oh, yeah. of all of the things that I had going on. Yes. But in those things that I had going on, he was showing me then that I had to turn my turn life. Around. I had to get myself together. I had to believe That's that it. I could be born again. Preach, preach, preach. See, some of y'all, some of y'all don't understand. See, what's that thing saying? Jesus. We don't have Jesus in us because we don't want to talk about being saved. We, we want to go out Oh, can I, can, I, can, I, can I mess with me for a little bit? Go ahead. Big tip. Big tip. Big tip. <laughs> we'll sit over here and talk about sports all day long. Yes. We'll sit over here and talk about the best sale in whatever city all day long. Yes. We'll get over here and start talking about shoes and getting our hair done all day my, long. My, 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 my. We can tell you the best smelling perfume and cologne all day long. Yes. But as soon as somebody come over there and say, tell me, what does the Bible mean when it says you uh, must be born again? Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of y'all start getting convulsions and have to get up out of the room because you're talking about something that made you feel Preach uncomfortable. It. Something that made you feel like you got to do something different. Preach See, but I'm just trying to tell you the reason you're walking in the midst of all of your pitifulness mm. is because you're in a pit mm -hmm. and you don't know that there's a God that cares. All right. New birth results in living hope. The living hope is based on a living, resurrected Christ. And 1 Peter 1 and 21, the living Christ is the source of our new birth and our living hope. What is living hope, somebody mm. would like to ask? Mm, 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 mm. My, my, my. What is the hope we now have? Mm -hmm. Not just the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. But a living hope to never die again. My, my, my. Mm -hmm. uh, see, 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 somebody said, wait a minute, now we, everybody's going to die. Some of us going to lay down and go to sleep. That's right. That's right. But can, I, can, I be, can, I, can I be theological for a moment? All of y'all going to lay down and go to sleep. We call it death because we won't get to talk to you in this world again. Mm -hmm. But when Gabriel blow the horn, Scripture teaches us, and we always talk about one half of it. We said the dead in Christ will ride first, mm -hmm. and then the others will be caught up. Mm -hmm. See, because preachers don't want to tell you this part. Mm -hmm. Then the, the dead that's going to the devil, that's going to be judged, uh -huh. they're they, 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 they not going to go down there and the devil going to be pitchforking them. The devil going to be in hell with you. That's right. Mm -hmm. The devil going to be burning in an eternal damnation with you. Yes. You can't go over there because you are married to the devil and say, hey, give me a break, dog. You know, we were running this hell together. That's he, right. He's going to say, well, if I could get out of it, I would, but we're both stuck with eternity. Mm. Uh -huh. We're going to burn. We're going to be burnt pickles, and we're not going to consume. Fix it. Fix See, it. somebody Fix needs it. to understand, Fix when you have a living hope, it's not only that you're going to be able to be with him for an eternity and a glory and a mansion, but I want you to know something. He's going to begin to start bringing things for you right now because God wants his people to be blessed, right? Right now. Right now. Yes. 
Because when it tells us obedience is better than sacrifice, can I, can I isogee this the way I would if I was just a good old country boy? See, what he was trying to tell you is see, if you would really start walking the straight and narrow, if you would really start doing what he has called you to do, then all of a sudden he began to open doors that you never had knew you had been bound up in. You, you'll be able to walk in places and people will just be able to say, hey, uh, don't I know you? And you say, well, uh, no, this is my first time here. Say, I know, it seems like I, they don't know you, they know that spirit of God and like yes. spirits will begin to show favor and because they have all these materialistic things, they, I always tell people don't get caught up on materialistic things but God wants you to have favor so that the devil will know to get his hands out of your That's business. Right. God That's wants you right. to have favor when you walk in obedience so that the other people watching you are saying, wait a minute, I was smarter than them in school. Why are they living so good? It's not because they're so good. It's because favor ain't fair. See, you That's need to right. understand sometimes when you need to begin to walk in a living hope, then we know that God is doing something in your life that will make a difference in your life. So then you got to understand, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hmm. Deuteronomy teaches us. Uh-huh. Yes. 28. Come on. Not only is it going to bless you. Yes. Y'all hear me? Bless you. Come on. Say amen. Now, who are you? That's your mom. <laughs> so I want you to get this thing. See, if your mama train you up right and you living right, he's going to bless your mama. Uh-huh. Yeah. He gonna bless you. Yes. Guess what? He gonna bless, bless your grandchildren and children too. Yes. Right. But see, we don't believe in that. See, but we rather go over here and straddle the fence. Uh -huh. We rather go over here and do our dirty work and have our hands. We rather believe in it. Well, I can do anything I want to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. But then all of a sudden, stuff starts shutting down on you. Uh -huh. Things start to break up on you. Then you begin to see that, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why ain't I getting a break? Well, it's because you broke your relationship with the master. You broke your relationship with the word of God. And the word of God is trying to tell you, you need to get yourself back on the straight and narrow. See, you, can't, you can't be doing some of everything. Because some things just wasn't meant for you to do. That's right. My niece was, Good word. If, I, if she was sitting in here right now, she would be in the choir because she's saying, and then she would sort of just lower her head down because she's going to say, I don't get ready to talk about it. When she was a little kid, she could sing, and her name is Harmony. And she could just had a beautiful voice, and she could just sing, and, and I told her, I said, girl, God is going to do something in your life. And, and as she got older, and she was pretty, and she was... And then she said, well, when I do stuff, I just don't feel right. I said, well, you can't do like everybody else. Uh-huh. She said, why? I said, because God has his hands on you. Yes. The devil's been buying them for a long time. Yes. See, your mother may be under attack. Your sister may be under attack. Uh -huh. Your whole family is under attack. But maybe you're the one that can pray them out. That can pray them out. And Amen. see, you know, right. they look at you like you lost your mind. Wait a minute. But see, Amen. the Bible teaches us, you know, that little old ruddy boy that they talked about that had an anointing on his life that went over there and started playing the, playing the harp for the king because he had an anointing on his life. Yes. Even though he made a lot of mistakes and he did a lot of jacked up stuff, David was a man after God's own heart. Yes, he because favor ain't fair. But God saw something inside because he had already put it in there at his birth. Some of y'all don't understand. God has put something inside. Inside. Yes. Yes. And you're too busy wasting it. Yes. Because you're not obedient. Well, and I make the point about obedience because obedience means that now I gotta hear him. And some of y'all are not obedient because you haven't trained yourself to hear his voice. Some of y'all are not obedient because you don't know it when he begins to tell you. Because God will tell you, you used to everybody said you shouldn't go left, but God said turn left. And you go over there and you see all those bad people left, and you say, Wait, wait a minute, why is he putting me over there? And then you have a chance to witness to them, and then when he tells you to go back right, all those people that was left. Now they're going to be right with you. All because right. He put you over there so you can show them. All See, right. some of y'all have lived a hellish life. Some of y'all have gone through some things because you had to go left. But uh -huh. God is trying to tell you now, in the future, when you begin to walk your straight and narrow, you can go over and relate to them. See, because I can't relate to a cracked head. All right. All right. In South Tryon, the lady came to me and she said, what can you do for us? You've never been an addict. Mm-mm-mm. And I looked at her, 
And all the, everybody got quiet like y'all got quiet. Mm. <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't come here to teach you how to be an addict. You already have a PhD in that. All right. <laughs> uh -huh. I came here to show you how to be a Christian. How to be a Christian. And if I go Good to show right now today, she'll come over there and she'll say, that's my pastor. Good Good because Amen. I didn't talk about her and her lifestyle, even though one on one we talked about all of her dirt. Mm -hmm. Because one on one, I'm gonna get inside your kitchen. All right. Because I want you to know that you didn't have nobody fool, and God already know your dirt. And yeah. then I'm gonna tell you, but now you need to come and change. And then when you start walking a different walk, and your future began to walk in His glory, watch my, this. My, my, People my. begin to walk come behind on. you. They be saying, "Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. I don't even know why. I didn't even like him." But great, and then you begin to say, "Well, you know, but, but God, God is doing something in your life." And then the next thing you know, they're following you out everywhere you go. Great, it's because, great because they don't know Jesus for themselves. But eventually, you teach them right. Uh, yes. And they begin, can I just and follow they a little? Bit? And they begin to hear from him. Great. And then the next thing you know, they begin to feel him on the inside. Great. And then they begin to see Jesus for themselves. Ah. They don't have to follow you anymore <laughs> because he's going to launch them out to go do their own thing. See, you yes. need to understand a living hope is a hope that never dies. A living hope is one that will be able to be a blessing. The hope is something that's perennial. You know, have y'all know what the perennial plants are? They die when they get cold, right? Yes. But soon as the sun spring back up. Yeah, all right. All of a sudden, you see, you done covered them up with all kind of trash and garbage. Wind is coming over them, blowing leaves all over. And next thing you know, you'll see something green and pretty popping up out of the leaves. Yes. And you say, what's that right there? That's that point that, oh, Lord, it's coming back up again. See, I want you to, you may bury me, but I still got Jesus inside. Uh, 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 you may come to me up with all your garbage, but I'm still going to give God the glory. Regardless of what's Free. going on in my life, I know that I have a God that's Free. Free. So the Christian life is, is a certain and sure fact that Christ is alive. Yes. Now look at all the movements out there. They come and they go. They come and they go. Sometimes they come and then all of a sudden deceptive people get in there and they, they start falsifying things and then it just falls apart. And there have been deceptive people in the church. Yes, they have. But the Christian church is still holding on. There have been lies talked about people in the church, but you know what? The word of God is still true. Mm -hmm. And those who have been born again have a living hope of a new life yes. here on earth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good the man word. had a checkup. And then he went to see his doctor to get the results. The doctor said to him, sit down, I, I have uh, bad news and awful news. And he said, bad news and awful. I'll take the bad news first. He said, you only have 24 hours to live. He said, 24 hours? I don't give a time in to get my stuff in order. I don't have enough time to fix things. I don't have enough time to, to turn things around. He said, well, what's the awful news? I should have told you this yesterday. My, 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 my. <laughs> Some of us, our time is running out. Running out. And some of us, we have wasted our future because yes. we're not living according to what God has called us to do. And some of us don't understand that God is trying to do something exceedingly and abundantly in your life. Yes. So I want you to understand, you need to get yourself together right, yes, right now. Amen. Because right now is the time that you can bless your future. Yes. Now is the time that you can transform your community. Now is the time that you can transform your family because they know everything. You know what I've learned about family? People know all your stuff. All your stuff. Yes. yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. I just had a, I had a brain fall. I don't think y'all ready for that. You know how you women go over there and y'all trying to act so sophisticated and your daughter know every time you be creepy. <laughs> Every time. All right. All right. She knows all of your creeps. <laughs> and she's sitting over there taking training because she said, well, mama was good, but she made a mistake here. See, if she would have ducked right then, see, she could have eased right through that thing. But she did. So, see, I, I, I'm going to have to teach mama something. I'm going to show her when I get old. But if you show your daughter mm. how to be holy, how to be holy. 
how to look at her body as a holy temple. Well, 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 well. And how to walk in a way that, that when people looked at her, they knew that that was a queen. Not because of her stride, but her stride was beautiful, but because of the glow that God had put around her. See, a lot of times we mess up our own glow because we are trying to be like everybody else. But right now is the time for you to change. Because yeah. you know what? That same daughter that was watching you when you was creeping, when you turned your life around, well, all of a sudden, she see you start saying, well, you can't do those things. You say, well, mama, you did it. You say, yeah, I did it. But then you remember on such and such a day. What's today's day? What? April 27th. Y'all can't, y'all don't know that. What's today's day? Sunday. What's today's day? Sunday. Sunday, April the 27th. <laughs> Preacher said, I need to get my stuff right now. Uh, 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 uh. And all of a sudden, I, I realized that, wait a minute, he's talking to me because he must be all up in my grill because he's talking about my mess. And, and men, don't think I'm just going to mess with the women because some of you men are worse than the women. Well, y'all sit over there. Y'all been abused all your life. You've been told that you was nothing. So you're trying to prove that you're something because you want to be a... Uh, oh. uh, 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 What's that songwriter's head? Bow, wow, wow, give me yo, give me yay. And you think that's the way you're supposed to be. Some kind of violin and dog, but I want you to understand. You need to turn your life around. You need to walk the straight and well, You need to get your heart well, well, You need to get your mind regulated. God is set in order. He's going to lead by himself. Women would follow. You know what I told the guys in the hood? I told the guys in the hood, if you would get your game together, the women would have to make their game. Because they know you don't want nothing useless, messed up, well, and jacked up. So, men, if you would walk right, if you right. would get your heart ready, oh, yeah. if you would clean up your hands, hey. if you would fix your eyes, uh. if you would get your ears in tune, hey. uh. then God can do some amazing things. How right. do you have blocked your blessing? Preach, preach. Yeah. That's good preaching. Because yeah. of your disobedience. My, my, my. And here, Peter is trying to tell you. If you would just be born again. Born again. Well, preacher, now you judging me. I show judging you. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Because if you come over here and tell me that you want to give me an orange. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if it's dark green and long. Mm -hmm. So that thing looks like a cucumber. <laughs> No, this is an orange. I know this is an orange because it's always been called an orange. Well, why is it green if it's an orange? That's right. Mm. All right. That's right. Where's the juice in it? Uh-huh. Can I peel it a little bit? And then they're going to give me a knife and tell me to peel off the green husk. And I was like, wait a minute, this right here got that old white stuff on it. That's not an orange. Then I go over here and show them an orange. And they say, well, no, that's not an orange. That's a cucumber. Then I know we need to quit talking. <laughs> because your mind is not in tune with what we have set as a standard. That's right. That's right. And we have some people in the church, your mind is not set to the standard that God has set before us. Well, you want to do anything and bring it in the church, but some stuff you can't bring in God's house. You want to do anything and say it's all right, and then you want me to pray for your mess and say it's all right. But I'm going to tell you that you can't do this. And now you say you're judging me. Well, if you call yourself a Christian, I just want to set a standard. If you call yourself a born yes, Christian, I want you to know that there's some guidelines that you need to follow. If you don't say that you've been saying, sanctified, then I'm tell you, you can't go out here acting like, mm, uh, well, I understand, if you don't yeah. get yourself right now, you may not have a future. If you don't get yourself right and in order now, you're messing up the future of your family. If you don't change, repent, repent yes. and give it to God. Go ahead. Amen. Then you are blocking all your future blessings. Yes. 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 See, that's what this thing is all about. Yes. Amen. I don't want you to be a Christian just to follow me. Mm. I don't have a heaven or hell in you. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. The one thing I do know, mm. I know a man that does. Well, Amen. see, Amen. so we need to understand when you have hope. hope. Now, y'all notice that hope that I have up there got a little light down in the bottom of it. Mm. See, if you don't have a light inside of you. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. That's right. If you don't have a light inside of you telling you, oh, wait a minute. No, stop. You can't do like them. Amen. You know, can I can I can I cut up real bad? Can you, you got my back preach. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Y'all know it's hard to be a preacher. Mm. 
Can I talk about me, Laverne? Yeah. All right. <laughs> he talk about me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard being a preacher. Yes. Being holy. Yes. And being single. Yes, it is. Mm. Yes, I'm it is. talk to you because you're the only one got success. <laughs> 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 because these people in this town are crazy. <laughs> Watch the story. Say it, preacher. See, they want you to be a Christian. Uh -huh. They want you to be holy. Yes. Except when you're around them. Except yeah. when you're around them. They want you to do dirt. Uh huh. So they can continue doing their dirt. Yes. So they can throw your dirt up in your face. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. That's good right. word. That's go good ahead. Go ahead. That's, nice That's the way it is. <laughs> And so when right. you start walking the straight and narrow, and they see you walking the straight and narrow, uh -huh. and they see that you're not falling for any Tom, Dick, and Harry that come your well, way. Well, yeah, I covered all the spectrum. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Then they, they, they want to start labeling you all kind of names. Yes. Uh -huh. So let me let me tell you what I want you to label me as. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A child of God. A child of God. Amen. 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 Go ahead. Watch this. Watch this. Go ahead. Because if I'm a child of God, I, I may stumble. That's uh -huh. right. Go but ahead. every day I'm going to be listening to my master tell me to talk. Right. Every yeah. day I'm going to be listening to my master tell me when to talk. Yeah. Well. Every day I'm going to be listening to him because yeah. I've already lived out there and I know what out there is like. Yeah. 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 I'm working for a crown yeah. and I know I want to get my blessings yeah. now. Yeah. 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 It makes me feel real good when I see yeah. God begin to shower down yeah. blessings right. on the children. Yeah. It makes me feel real good when I see when God begin to open doors. Well, 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 well. It makes me feel real good. Yeah. 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 Oh, it makes me feel real good when I see God use me, and sometimes I have to step back and say, hey, God, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that you could do that. Thank God Almighty. See, some of you don't understand you are missing out because you won't <clears throat> obey. Well, that's well, well, that's good. Yeah. All right. And God is calling us. Yeah. Yeah. We have a light in us. Yes. That's good for you. God is yeah. calling yeah. us. They have a praise in us. Y'all mm. see that picture right there? He's he wide open right there. Yes. Yeah. Outstretched arms. Because when you go through enough, mm. and then you realize God reached in the midst of your going through yes. Yes. and pull you through it. Yes. And then you can look back. Yes. Man. Hallelujah. What he brought you from. Oh, yes. yes. Thank you. you can look back. Uh -huh. Thank you. What he brought you through. Uh -huh. And then you can look forward and see it. Thank you. And you see that he's holding you in the palm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, and you see that he's taking you to his bosom because he's calling you one of his own. Yeah, thank you. Then you begin to realize that I know that I know yeah, that I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know that I don't have to worry about whether or not I thank have you, Lord. Because yeah. my hope is built on nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. less than Jesus', Jesus. blood and righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. here today yeah. needs to understand yeah. you need to have a hope in a God. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Man or woman, go ahead, go ahead. Not, a power, not in a job. Go ahead. You have a hope and a power that can make all those other things. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Hallelujah. That's what this life is all about. Thank you, Lord. That's what salvation is all about. Thank you, Lord. So y'all wonder why I can have a good time. I know some of y'all see me in the car sometimes. Y'all be saying, Ray over here, he must be listening to beatbox music. <laughs> Preacher told me once you need to listen to beatbox music so you can know what your people are listening to. Mm. I said, No, I don't. I already know what they're listening to. Uh -huh. I need to listen to something that's going to help me get my praise on. Yes, yes, stay yes, in yes. The phone. Because if I start listening to what y'all are listening to, if I start doing what y'all are doing, yes. mm. y'all are running me out of the door. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> You'll say it, but the rest of us do it. Right. Oh, we want to keep you here, then. Here, 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 here. So I invite you to come. You want to leave us in prayer? Amen. I invite y'all to come. If if you feel like your life.